A year that begins with bad will end with good. These are the words of Rabbi Yitzchak in the Talmud. And while they're written over a thousand years ago, hopefully they apply to today. If ever in our lives there was a need for hope in a better year ahead, it surely is this one. It's also, if I'm being honest, the most, I always am, the most difficult moment for a sermon that I've ever had. To seek inspiration, to find our footing in a world that keeps shifting underneath us is a truly Herculean task. For months, my friends and family have been asking me, so are you going to talk politics this year? Or said to me, whoa, I'm glad I don't have to say anything. And I want to set expectations by way of a preamble. We are living in important times, times in which the Jewish people play a central role. Israel is trying to rescue hostages while for the first time in 50 years fighting a war on two or three fronts. There is an election in this country that will drastically affect our nation's future. What we do this year will matter for generations to come. There is much to say, multiple sides and opinions that a rabbi could have. Do I have beliefs on these issues? On who we should all vote for and how the situation in Israel should be handled? Of course I do. Are my opinions the correct ones? Of course they are. <laughs> Is it my role to share those opinions with you? I don't think that it is. I'm happy to discuss my thoughts with anyone one-on-one, -on -one, and I would love to hear yours. But I am not a pundit or a politician. I'm a pastor. I'm not an expert on policy here or in Israel. I have dedicated my life to the Jewish people and to the Jewish soul. And it is our souls that we concern ourselves with today on Rosh Hashanah. This entire month, Jews are told to engage in cheshbon nefesh an accounting of our souls. We examine ourselves and our actions in the past year, and we think about who we want to be in the next one. This accounting, when done in honesty and love, shows us parts of our souls in need of repair, the actions in need of repentance, and people in need of forgiveness. Cheshbon HaNefesh leads to understanding, to tshuva, and to being a better versions of ourselves. The cheshbon today is not only of us as individuals, but as one people in time. The rabbis posit that in the beginning, God created just one soul, and from that one came all of the others. They are saying that our souls, while being unique to who we are, were once connected and are still a part of a collective soul that shines out. This nefesh yehudi, this Jewish soul, is comprised of all of us those born Jewish, those who've chosen to be Jewish, and those who love Jews and have become a part of our tribe. All of us join together to make the soul of the Jewish people. And this collective deserves its own review. What is the state of the Jewish soul this year? And what do we want it to be in the year ahead? Any accounting of this year must start on October 7th. On that day, the soul of the Jewish people was shattered. Our conception of Israel's intelligence and safety was broken. Our souls cracked with the death of each of the 1,200 people killed that day. They break again and again with every story of heroism and tragedy, with each red alert and rocket attack from the north or the south. Our souls can't heal because of the roughly 100 people still held captive. And with further threats looming, we can't even begin to put the group back together. The broken edges of our souls cut in many ways. The attacks happened last year as we began reading the book of Bereshi, of Genesis. And I thought then of a scene in that book where Jacob hears that his estranged brother Esau is coming to greet him with 400 soldiers. 
The Torah tells us that Jacob was scared and afraid. And the Midrash says, why use two words? These two words indicate that Jacob was both scared that he might be killed and afraid that he might have to kill others. These are two fears I've held since the moment I heard of the attacks. Our souls are torn by the death and terror inflicted upon us and also torn by the violence of Israel's response. We can hold both of these halves of a broken soul at once. We're scared for our family. We are proud of their ability to defend themselves in a way that Jews have never been able to before. And we are also afraid of what they will have to do. We are saddened by the pain that we cause, regardless of its justification. Causing pain and seeing those we love cause pain affects our souls. Whether we have lived in Israel or never been once, we are all bound up by what happens in the Holy Land. And the Jewish soul in this country has also had a hard year. Now, our challenges are less existential than across the ocean, but they are challenges nonetheless. For decades, scholars have relished in the hyphen between American and Jew in our identity labels. In his new book, Rabbi Cosgrove, who will be speaking here later this year, devotes an entire chapter to living the hyphen. He says that walking this narrow line between our identities is how we must actualize the potential of what it is to be a contemporary Jew. Now, Rabbi Cosgrove is, of course, correct. But living that hyphen has been more difficult this year than it has been for a generation. There's always been anti-Semitism in this country, but its presence in the open is still shocking. Please do not misunderstand me. I have said this before, and I will again. This is not like Germany in the 30s, nor is the golden age of Judaism in America over. This country has been the greatest home that we've ever known, and we have the power and allies to keep it that way. We can keep walking the hyphen of our identity, even though it is a more fraught path than we thought. In fact, there are many Jews who have been walking proudly all year. There was a surge in participation and practice across the Jewish community. And this rise in belonging may come from a sense of peoplehood and pride. And it also might be that Jewish spaces are now somewhere that someone can be fully themselves. Because even as I share my conviction that this country is a safe place for the Jews, I will admit to thinking twice about wearing a kippah before I go into some strange places because I don't know who I don't know. We're sad to have to face this question, unasked by us or our parents, but all too familiar to our grandparents. Should I let them know that I'm Jewish? The golden age of American Judaism is far from over, but there is now more uncertainty about our place here. And there is pride in the Jewish community, as there should be, but there is also a fear, a fear that can corrode both halves of our hyphenated soul. These are the rough outlines of our cheshbon for what this year has meant to the soul of our people. It has been a trying time to be sure for the collective soul as well, for, as well as the individuals in this room. It seems like every week there has been a thing, some new thing for us to process, a new reason to be outraged, to be saddened, to be tearful, to be diplomatic, to rally, to write a letter, to show up, to live up to the promise that all of Israel is responsible for one another. It would be understandable if after a year like this one, we were exhausted spiritually and emotionally. It would be understandable to give in to fear and anger and hate and a hardening of our hearts. We could close ourselves off, fixate on our issues and pain alone. It would be understandable, but it wouldn't be Jewish. The Jewish answer to troubles and crisis is not despair or walling ourselves off. The Jewish people have, unfortunately, had years like this before. The shock to the soul that we're feeling is partially because we thought this part of our people's history was behind us. Jews under attack, anti-Semitism on the rise, our place in the world precarious. These were the issues of past generations, not ours. But while we acknowledge the bitter taste of joining the ranks of our ancestors, we also note their response to adversity. Their examples show us the resilience not only to persevere, but to create. 
The destruction of the first temple led Ezra to revolutionize Torah study. The rabbinic Judaism we all live today was an innovation in the aftermath of the second temple's destruction. Rambam spent his early years fleeing for his life and still managed to write one of the most influential books that we have. After the Shoah, we created two of the most successful Jewish communities in history, here and in Israel, neither without their issues, but both testaments to the Jewish soul's capability and its creativity. Nor is that creativity erased by the events of this past year. I want to read to you a poem that is a witness to the soul of our people, to its brokenness and also to its hope. It is from a book of poems written after October 7th. It is written by Rachel Goldberg Poland, two months after her son Hirsch was taken hostage in Gaza. And knowing now what we do about her son's fate, it is all the more heart-wrenching and all the more powerful. There is a lullaby that says, your mother will cry a thousand tears before you grow to be a man. I have cried a million tears in the last 67 days. We all have. And I know that way over there, there's another woman who looks just like me because we are all so very similar and she has also been crying. All those tears, a sea of tears, they all taste the same. Can we take them, gather them up, remove the salt and pour them over our desert of despair and plant one tiny seed, a seed wrapped in fear, trauma, pain, war, and hope, and see what grows. Could it be that this woman so very like me, that she, could, she and I could be sitting together in 50 years, laughing without teeth because we have drunk so much sweet tea together, and now we are so very old and our faces are creased like worn-out paper bags, and our sons have their own crib. <laughs> and our sons have their own grandchildren, and our sons have long lives. One of them without an arm, but who needs two arms anyway? Is it all a dream, a fantasy, a prophecy, or one tiny seed? I cannot know what Rachel Goldberg Poland has been through. Hopefully none of us can, and hopefully none of us ever will. But I am in awe of her determination to save her son and her ability within the depths of that struggle to write this poem, to write of her tears and the tears of another, to hope for a tiny seed that will come from all of this death and destruction. It is a monument to her spiritual capacity that she could put this tiny seed into the world at a time when most of us wouldn't be able to get out of bed. And that's why I wanted to speak to you today of souls, the unseen, unknowable essence of who we are. They are everything that drives and keeps us. Security is important, so is being watchful, but nothing compares to the importance of our spirit and the collective soul of our people. The prophet Zechariah, who led the effort to rebuild the first temple after its destruction, has a vision of what it would take to rebuild that temple. His words resonate through the millennia as he reminds us that salvation comes not by might and not by power, but by spirit alone. The prophet's words are true today. Things have been dark this year, but we will be okay. We are grateful for the strength of the Jewish people throughout the world. We should remember... It is not the military might of Israel, nor the power and influence of the diaspora that will see our people through to the future. We have seen harder days with far fewer resources, and we still survive. It is our spirit, the power of our souls to find strength and resilience, to keep building and hoping for the future, the ability of our souls to mourn the brokenness and at the same time plant the tiny seeds of our repair. It is no accident that the words of the song that became Israel's anthem assert that our hope lies in nefesh yichudi homia, that the Jewish soul yearns. Because it is in our yearnings that we are known. 
in our goals and hopes that we see our character. Surely an accounting of our souls must encompass not only what has happened to us this past year, but what we yearn to have happen in the next. The souls of the Jewish people is one that craves life and hope, that wants to build a better world for everyone. A spirit that is far from hidden, but seen in so many places in our world. It was seen in the reservists and EMTs and civilians who, on hearing the news on October 7th, ran into the fire to save others. It is seen in the Israelis who dropped everything this year to step up and care for one another. It is seen in the Israelis who put down their protest signs for now, but not forever not giving up the fight to make Israel the democracy that it needs to be. It is in all of the family members of the hostages who keep hope alive as they live through horror. And in this country, the souls of the Jewish people strive also for hope. We saw this in the 300,000 people who came to Washington to show support for Israel when it was attacked. We see it in the students who come to Hillel in record numbers this year, searching for meaning and community, who come to pray and be together even when they are literally being attacked for doing so. And it is also in the Jews who stand up for the dignity of human life, especially the lives of Palestinians. To see past our own hurt and fear and care for the humanity of the other, I can think of few testaments to the generosity and life-giving nature of the Jewish soul of that. And it is seen in all of you, in this synagogue, who this year gathered. You gathered resources. You gathered together time and time again for services, for classes, for vigils, who reached out to me, to the leadership of our synagogue, and to each other with that most righteous of questions, what can I do? How can I help? The world is scarier this year than it was when we stood here a year ago. There are people who seem to hate us. There are people who want to use us. And there are people who want us gone. It is a reason to be sad. It is a reason to be angry. It's a reason to be numb. And for those just trying to get through the day, numbness may be required. But for those of us who can, let us this year nurture our spiritual strength. Let us nurture our hope. Let us nurture our creative. We cannot close ourselves off or stop working for a better day. Our souls may be shattered, but we cannot let them shrink. Our souls may be tired, but they are ancient, and they have deep wells of wisdom and resilience. The Jewish people are one of the few ancient peoples to have made it out of antiquity. Historian Joseph Klausner writes that perhaps chief among the gifts that Israel brought to the world is that they were the first people on the global stage to assert that the world would get better and not worse. We have survived for thousands of years, outlasting empire after empire, not by might and not by power, but by our spirit, a spirit certain that eventually the world will be better than it is right now. Let us cultivate that spirit this year. Let us give to others, care, sing, and dance again. Let us support and protect those in need. Let us create and choose life. Let us stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. Let us draw strength from the hope that they had for us so that we can give hope and strength to those who will come next. Let us pray for a year that is better than the last. And let us work to make that happen with all our power, all our might, and all our soul. Do not provide. We turn to page 172 for Ain Kelohenu. No del Malkeinu, no del Moshienu, Baruch Eloheinu, Baruch Adoneinu, Baruch Malkeinu, Baruch Moshienu, 
Atahu Eloheinu, Atahu Adoneinu, Atahu Malkeinu, Atahu Moshienu, Atahu Shektiru Avoteinu, Lefanecha Ekatoret Asahim. If you're able, I invite you to please rise. Alenu, page 173. <laughs> may be seated or remain standing as we turn to Mourner's Kaddish on page 174 for all those in a period of mourning for anyone observing a yard site Kadisha Tom is on page 174 <laughs> Bagala Vizman Kariv Vimru Amen. Yeesh me Rabba Mivarach Lealamu Meal Maya Vit Barach Vishtabach Vit Paar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shemed Kudsha Brichu Leela Mi Leela Mi Kol Birchata Vishirata Tushbechata Venechamata Dami Ran Bialma Vim Ramein Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vichayim Aleinu Vial Kol Yisrael Vim Ramein Vose Shalom Vim Amab Uya Se Shalom Aleinu Vial Kol Yisrael Vim Ramein Shana Tova Shana Tova I want to thank everyone for uh, being here with us today. Uh, thank you, Chazan Rosner, um, for uh, leading our services, for all that you do for our community. Um, thank you, Rabbi Schwartzman. Um, this is, we, we figured out, it's not your first uh, Rosh Hashanah with us because you were here as an intern last year, but it is your first Rosh Hashanah with us as a rabbi of the community. We are delighted to have you, uh, and thank you for all that you do for the show. Uh, friends, uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, in addition to thanking everyone uh, else who read, who spoke, who had an aliyah, who opened an ark, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we, uh, to just at 4.30 today, Tashlich, just as a reminder, there are two uh, different options for you. There's Penwin Park and there is Shortridge Park. Uh, I think just, you know, pick a direction on Remington and you can find it. Uh, but that's at 4.30, um, and there'll be also a communal picnic uh, there uh, following Tashlich and Minchamariv this evening at 5.45. Uh, there's lots going on in our community. There's lots of speakers. There's lots of opportunities for things. It's all on uh, your tickets. It's all on uh, information in the lobby. Uh, we look forward to greeting you in just a few moments, but check those out. I do want to point out, just because it's coming up very soon, uh, that... This October 7th, um, all, all of the synagogues in the area are joining together um, for a memorial 
uh, on October 7th at Adif Israel at 7.30 p.m. Um, so please join us for that. That is where our observance will be um, as we join with all of our um, local synagogues for this moment of memorial. Uh, with that, we conclude our services with Adon Olam, page 175, page 175, uh, and then look forward to greeting everyone. Wait, last thing, sorry. Uh, there are a lot of new faces that I'm seeing around here. We've had a wonderful lot of new members join the shul. If you see someone next to you that you don't recognize, turn around, introduce yourself to them. It might be awkward if you've sat next to them for 30 years and you just don't know their name, but you know, live in that awkwardness and make a new friend. Um, so meet someone new, welcome someone into the community or back to the community here for, uh, maybe we haven't seen them in a year. We're uh, welcome to have all of you here as we conclude our services, Adon Olam 175. Adon Olam Asher Malach Beterem Kol Yitzir Nivra Leit Nasa Hef Tzokol Azai Melech Shemo Nikra Be'achare Kichlot Hakol Ve'hu Haya Vehu hove, vehu ye beti fara, vehu ephat, ve ye chedi, leham shilo, leham fira, belly reishi, belly.